This isn't exactly a video you see from me too often. I was contacted by Elio to review their vehicle. Now this is a prototype of a vehicle that they're trying to bring to market and I am more than happy to see what it's all about. Here I am in the Elio. Now this is a new experience for me. This is not normally something I do, but I'm actually reviewing a car that isn't out yet. Um, they contacted me and said, hey, you know, you're a more of a technical guy and uh, you have a, an audience. Uh, we'd love for you to come out and take a look at our car. So, like I said, this is not a normal thing for me and what I want to point out is that this is in absolutely no way uh, a paid advertisement. There's no money, no nothing like that. This is truly my opinion of a vehicle. Now, I think they lucked out because this is something I would actually drive. I love <laughs> really weird, unique cars and uh, this is definitely one of them. First of all, this is a prototype of their vehicle and uh, it actually runs. That's, that's, you know, for somebody that's, you know, trying to make something happen, at least they have something that does run, even if there's, you know, a handful, one of them, two of them. Uh, it's still, it's still pretty impressive. I, I'm impressed when my own car that was built by Mazda <laughs> runs and uh, this never existed. So quite a cool, quite a cool accomplishment here. So you're gonna notice a lot of different things. First of all, uh, even on the most narrow uh, point of view with the GoPro, there's not much space behind me. This vehicle really looks like, you know, from your point of view, this vehicle ends. You know, there's, there's a seat behind me, which is kind of fun. Uh, it's bigger than my brother's GTR rear seats, but uh, that's it, the seat, and then, you know, you got the back, rear tire back there. There's not much uh, behind me. The funny thing is, you don't feel like that. And then instead, you're actually focused on the front two wheels. You can actually see them, you know, in kind of your peripheral vision. And in your mind, when you're driving this, it feels like that's how wide the whole car is. So, nice little little car, nothing, nothing crazy. You actually just, like, drive it. Just normal vehicle. Now, I'm in a parking lot, and uh, like I said, this is a prototype vehicle, so if you see me not wearing my seatbelt, there's a reason why. Because I'm crazy like that. Because <laughs> I'm crazy. Because it doesn't. It's, it's it's not functional. And one of the things you're going to notice immediately, the one of the very first things I kind of uh, picked up on immediately, is that the front wheels articulate. They turn as as you're turning. You you see that. What you don't see, or what you don't, what you notice is as I turn, the body doesn't turn like a, a motorcycle. Like this doesn't this doesn't behave like a motorcycle shell. You know, this, it's, you know, it's got motorcycle like hints, you know, it's got a spirit of kind of a motorcycle in some senses, but you know, you don't, you don't turn, lean into a turn um, or pull wheelies. <laughs> the, the engine in this is front, front engine, front wheel drive. So the rear wheel, unlike, you know, like a motorcycle where, you know, you've got the chain in the back and everything, it's got the rear uh, suspension of a motorcycle, but the drive's in the front. So you got both front tires pulling you along. Like I said, you look at it, you notice that the front wheels kind of make your perception of this whole thing wider than the whole back of it is. So you see me kind of going through this parking lot here. The maneuver is phenomenal. I'm, I'm actually, I genuinely, genuinely would drive one of these. This is, this is something that uh, you get a lot of looks at right now because it's so small, but uh, I would drive the shit out of it. If you notice, you notice that the car actually does not, you're mentally stopping right here. You don't actually uh, unless you're used to holding your hands with your girlfriend, who in my case does not exist, there's no need for space over here. Nothing needs to exist because your life is sad and pathetic, in my case. Now, overall, you just get used to the fact that this is actually a lot wider than your space, your imaginary space in a normal car. So I, I instantly am surprised at how much more room I have than, you know, it looks like a banana from the outside. It looks like that there's no way that there's space in here proof's right here it actually I'm actually kind of impressed first of all you can tell that this is a prototype and that you know that's something years of working with Ford and they had you know their prototype Lincolns you get used to it even Ford had you know uh, what do you call it you know the, the clay models and stuff and the exhaust pipes weren't real like you realize that that is actually just an industry-wide thing so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna critique this because it's a, a prototype because you know I'm gonna give them a lot of respect that they've really built something they, they this is clearly has taken a lot of money and time and love 
to build. So you know that's that to me legitimizes a lot of the fears I had. Now again, this is not a paid this is not a paid I th- anything. And I think that's one of the reasons they have me out here is because I'm a very uh, I work very hard to be a trusted voice in things. And uh, obviously, you know, like any anything, you can't go out and just buy it yet. You can reserve it, which which is a cool model. But you know, just like a, a Kickstarter that doesn't happen or a um, pre-release game and the game sucks, you know, you have, you have that that one bit of uh, you know fear, a little bit of uh, concern that that you know is something that coming out here helped me understand a little bit more. So there are very good people working on the, these vehicles. I've I've met a lot the whole team, and. Uh, makes me feel a lot more comfortable with them, of course, but at the same time, I'm still not the type of guy that's going to go out and buy something that doesn't exist when it's something that's very tactile. It's a very, it's a vehicle. You've got to be able to feel it to drive it. That's something that, you know, would always concern me. One thing I noticed is that the steering is pretty good, but I feel like my RX-7 steer, or turns just a little bit tighter, but, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to, I'm trying to be honest. I'm trying to nitpick. Uh, I felt hitting wheel lock a little bit sooner than I expected out of this small of a car. Obviously, this is a prototype, so I'm not. I'm, you know, they're not working with their uh, final production. You know, this, you know, there's certain things that you know can and, and can't happen, and sometimes those things you know get scrapped out of you know production. Like you see all these beautiful things in in a pre-production model or the uh, prototype, and they end up not being in the car. Um, my concern here, though, is that. This car's already cheap. There's already it's already in, inexpensive. There aren't widgets that um, could get dropped. It just has to work. It has to be what what they're selling. So you know, I'm, I'm kind of concerned as to what's the difference between the prototype and the the real model. I really they really can't get rid of anything because it is a bare bones vehicle. So I, I am excited about that. You know, there's not fancy lights. There's not fancy uh, well plush leather or anything. And this thing's you know durable. That's I think that's what they're going for. So let's look at the key takeaways. Would I own one? Yes, I actually would own one. You know me well enough to know that I love eclectic vehicles. I love something that's unique, that gets a little bit of attention, but also isn't the most expensive thing, the most brand new, insane new technology. I like things that come from working, proven environments. This is all of that. This is an eclectic car. It's cool. People look at it. They give you know give it a little bit of attention. It's not bleeding edge technology, it makes sense to me. It, it's a, the concept works. It's already existing in 80% of its form. All the parts are from previous OEMs. All this, all this makes sense to me. I feel like the vehicle itself, the prototype, this is my second point, the prototype itself makes sense. It's the business that you know, is, the, is the concern. Can they raise enough money to bring this to life? Now that's not my realm. That's not, that's not something that I know enough about to speak educated or intelligently about is that I see it. I see a lot of people that are you know, reserved for it. And I see that the business people, the people that are in charge, the people that are on the board, they're all legitimate, high up automotive people. So the biggest concern I had about it was can they bring it to market? You, you number one thing in business is you have the right people before you have the right ideas. They have the right people. That's something that I was very concerned about before making this video is, am I walking into (laughs) a a reputation death trap? Is this something where they're trying to use my legitimacy to get a couple more, you know, scams and call it out? That's not the case here. These are genuinely people in the automotive world, former CEOs, former VPs of finance, of operations, all that sort of thing, trying to bring an eclectic vehicle to life. That definitely means a lot to me.